Hey, 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 it's me, Tiffany Aliche, the budget nista, your favorite financial educator. I'm gonna be watching a video I've never seen before about a young woman who makes $88,000 a year and how she spends it in the Bay Area. Now, before we get started, I need you to do me a favor. Hit that like button, because I like you. So prove it to me that you like me. I had spent the past year thinking about all of my debt and just realizing that no matter how much more in salary I was making, I was still living paycheck to paycheck. Well, first things first, sis looks like she's living a fabulous life. I see her eating out. I see her doing the aerobics where they like hang you from the ceiling. Life doesn't look that bad. Hi, I'm Christine Hopkins. I'm 27 years old. I make $88,000 a year and I live in Berkeley, California. For $88,000 a year, I'm curious to see what does Christine do for a living? Because that's good money to be 27 years old. But I also know that California is a very expensive state. In Berkeley, California. Currently, I work as a marketing campaign manager for a company called Blue Wolf. Uh, we're a part of IBM and we do Salesforce consulting. My biggest expense is rent, but I wouldn't say that I'm struggling every month. I think that the only other thing that inhibits me is the amount of debt that I had collected. So once I can figure that out and pay that down, then I would definitely be living a pretty comfortable life here. First thing that kind of surprised me is Christine's rent. It is $1,300 a month. That's actually not bad. Food and drink, $600, a little on the high side, but I suspect that Christine likely eats out more than she cooks in, which is pretty typical for a millennial. Debt repayment, whoo child. So, okay, this is where it gets a little high, $975. So that's a significant amount. I suspect she's probably paying back her student loans. Savings, okay, Christine, high five, ma'am. She's saving $1,860. That's actually great. And miscellaneous, $363. Here's the thing. Show me where I can purchase some miscellaneous from the store. You can't. So I would love for her mis miscellaneous to be much smaller since it's not clearly defined. And money's being spent on specific things, so you want to get specific with it. Let's learn more. I think the biggest benefit is that they go through all of your expenses and let you know exactly how much you're spending on everything. So you can kind of have like an eye-opening on what you're wasting your money on. I thought I was doing okay, but. So one thing I really like that Christine has done is she said before signing up for a financial program, she wasn't saving anything. And she signed up for one. And I, we, like I just said, she's saving over $1,800 a month. It looks like this program costs $85 a month. So to me, that's money well spent. I currently have student loan debt from my undergraduate degree, and then I also have credit card debt. The cat is out of the bag. So yes, that $975, I think it was, a month that she's spending on debt, a large part of that is her student loan debt, which is pretty typical if you live in the US of A. She also has credit card debt here, and it said it was like $11,000, which unfortunately is also pretty typical. So. You really want to buy things with the money that you actually have to avoid having to pay so much out toward credit card debt. Before I started trying to be better with my credit cards, I would go out all the time and buy just like clothes and interesting things like that, and like accessories. I would buy flights to go hang out with my friends at other places. Any travel would just go straight on my credit card. I never bought a flight with my debit card or with cash, things like that. So I've been trying to recently reteach myself and pay down that debt and just try and get to a debt-free life because I think that's just a more comfortable way to live and it just gives you a lot more freedom financially. See, I like this. One, she took responsibility. She understands that $11,000 of the debt didn't just happen. Sometimes we like to pretend, who did that? Not me. She understands that a lot of the debt that she incurred really were for experiences that she probably should have set aside the money for to experience fully. And she is taking that more seriously now and she's working on paying it down. Kudos to you, mamacita. So we're gonna be moving to Germany. 
I think it's gonna be pretty expensive. I believe flights alone just for us are gonna be at least 2,000 each. I also don't currently have a job set up for us out there, so we just wanna try and save as much as we can before we go so that we're not under too much financial pressure once we get there. So while she's super focused on saving, I would also be super focused on finding a job that I could take with me wherever I want because it makes me a little nervous for you to be in another country and not have regular income coming in. So that's actually pretty good, especially if it's only been a few months. So if she can tighten her belt even more, she should be good to go for Germany. When you teach, you learn twice. So the fact that she's helping other people means she's only going to solidify the financial knowledge in herself even more so. So this is really exciting that she's really making her finances a priority in every way, shape and form. I live in Berkeley, California, but I work in downtown San Francisco. And luckily there's a bus stop really close to me that does Transbay service. So I take that every day. It costs me $11 round trip. Me and my partner had always wanted a scooter. They just look so fun and so convenient to have. So we went down to the scooter shop and it cost us $2,000 brand new out the door. So we split that evenly. And then that is one thing also that went on a card for me. Hold up, wait a minute. Scooter insurance is only $100 a year? Well, sign me up. I want to scoot. I didn't know that. I just had to say that. That's pretty cool. Luckily, there's a service here called Gig. And what that is, is you can just have a membership where you have your card on your phone and you go and you unlock the car with an app and then it charges you per mile or per minute, whichever one is cheaper. So it's nice to be able to have that service when we need it to go and take our dogs to the beach or to go get some furniture for shopping at Ikea and things like that. She doesn't have to own a car because car maintenance, car payments, car insurance can be super high. She's got her scooter and she's smart because she's taking public transportation. I like Christine. She's keeping it real financially cute. A bunch of friends of mine in the Bay Area have been going to Burning Man for the past few years with me. There you see a lot of different things like that. So I started looking up where I could do it and it turned out the place was about an eight minute drive from my house. So I definitely, I had to give it a shot. It's important that your money is not just to pay for bills. It is to help you live a better life. and. She's able to take those classes because she uses something called ClassPass, 50 bucks a month. That's actually not bad. I think the most important lesson I've learned about dealing with money is that you should really have a cushion for if anything happens, because if I lost my job, I would not be able to pay for my apartment and for food if I didn't have any sort of cushion. And I think that money just buys you freedom and it does buy you a certain amount of just comfort and relaxation if you're not being stressed out about how much money you owe on something or if you're gonna be late on a bill. I think it just really helps you live a little bit more of a carefree life. I absolutely agree. Money cannot buy happiness, but it can help to make you feel more secure and it can help with your comfort. So money is not the goal, it is a goal on your way to the richer life that you wanna live. So Christine, see you're learning, I love it. I was getting to a point where I was like, well, I'm an adult, if I haven't figured it out by now, like this just must be how it is. And then I started seeing that other people have these savings and they don't have debt. And I just thought that was so crazy and I wanted to learn how to do it. So it's just never too late to start asking questions and figuring that out. Dun, dun, dun. I think I would give her an eight and a half. That's because Christine is doing all the right things, but she does have debt and she's not investing in wealth, so I can't quite give her a 10. What Christine is doing well is that she's keeping her expenses low 
and she is really maximizing her money as it relates to where she lives and transportation. And what Christine could be doing better is that miscellaneous piece. Identify where that 300 something dollars is going and put it towards something definitively. Maybe it's saving or maybe it's even paying down more debt. Um, and start investing for wealth um, when, when you've paid off your credit card debt. Once that's gone, I think you're just going to have so much more space to do so. So that's what she could do better. But overall, she's doing a really great job. Now that you watched the video, please don't forget to subscribe to CNBC Make It. And you can follow me at The Budget Nista on social media, YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. And wait before you go. Finance is not just for you, it's for little ones too. That's why me, former preschool teacher, actually wrote my first children's book called Happy Birthday Molly Moore. And it teaches pre-financial literacy to your babies, ages three to seven. You can find Happy Birthday Molly Moore at mollymore.com. That's M-A-L-I-M-O-R-E. So that way you can make it, they can make it, we can make it together.